Hello, my brush lads, lasses, and everybody in between. My name is Tyler, and today we'll be looking at one of my favorite commanders, the Sliver Hive Lord. Slivers are incredibly fun to play, and with the wide assortment of abilities to choose from, you can tailor your deck to fit your playstyle. My personal build mainly focuses on my commander, the Sliver Hive Lord, and his effect to grant indestructibility, alongside the Spiteful Sliver who gives all of our slivers the ability to redirect any damage that they are dealt to any player or planeswalker. Combining these with mass damage spells like Star of Extinction or Blasphemous Act can completely destroy all of our opponents in one fell swoop. Since all slivers run along more or less the same line, let's cover their playstyle real quick before moving on to the deck itself. Slivers can basically be divided into two categories old slivers that affect all slivers on the battlefield, and the quote-unquote modern slivers that affect only your slivers. Most slivers come in some kind of buff or keyword ability that they can share among their friends, meaning the more you amass, the deadlier each individual one becomes. With that out of the way, let's get started. Starting with our commander, we have the Sliver Hive Lord, a 5-5 legendary sliver for the full Wooberg, whose effect gives all of our slivers indestructible. Slivers offer a high degree of customization when it comes to choosing effects, so take my build as a starting point if you want to make these fun guys in your own direction. Our first batch of slivers are the ones that give true blue keyword abilities to their friends, and I'll be covering some of the more obscure abilities after I list all the slivers. Belligerent Sliver gives Menace, Blur Sliver gives Haste, Bone Scythe Sliver gives Double Strike, Cloud Shredder Sliver gives Flying and Haste, Crystalline Sliver gives Shroud. First Sliver's Chosen gives Exalted. Fury Sliver gives Double Strike. Ground Shaker Sliver gives Trample. Homing Sliver gives Sliver Cycling 3. Hunter Sliver gives Provoke. Lancer Sliver gives First Strike. Mesmeric Sliver gives Fate Seal 1. Pulmonic Sliver gives Flying, but can also give all Slivers the ability to put themselves on top of their owner's library when they die. Quick Sliver gives Flash, Sentinel Sliver gives Vigilance, Spinneret Sliver gives Reach, Synchronous Sliver gives Vigilance, Siphon Sliver gives Lifelink, the First Sliver gives Cascade, and Wing Sliver gets Flying. While most of these are known evergreen keywords, Sliver Cycling 3, Fate Seal 1, and Provoke are three odd ones. Sliver Cycling 3 just means that all slivers in a player's hand can be discarded for three mana to search that player's library for any sliver card and add it to their hand. Fate Seal 1 means that when a creature with Fate Seal 1 enters the battlefield, we get to look at the top card of an opponent's library and choose if we want to put it on top or on bottom of their library. Think of it as scrying, but for your opponent's library. Provoke says that when the creature with Provoke attacks, you may target a creature that the defending player controls, untap that creature, and have it block the creature with Provoke. For our next batch of slivers, we're looking at the Blanket, Power, and or Toughness Anthems. These include Megantic Sliver, which gives plus three plus three, and Predatory Sliver, which gives plus one plus one. And uh, I really thought there was gonna be more of these here. Anyways, our third batch of slivers are ones that actually give full worded abilities to themselves and other slivers. These include Constricting Sliver, Crypt Sliver, Diffusion Sliver, Harmonic Sliver, Lava Belly Sliver, Leeching Sliver, Mana Weft Sliver, Mnemonic Sliver, Necrotic Sliver, Root Sliver, Spiteful Sliver, and Toxin Sliver. Constricting Sliver gives the ability for slivers to exile creatures our opponents control when they enter the battlefield, and return them when the sliver leaves the battlefield, basically turning all of our slivers into small oblivion rings. Crypt Sliver lets slivers tap to regenerate a target sliver. Diffusion Sliver makes it so any spell that an opponent casts that targets one of our slivers is countered unless they pay an additional two. Harmonic Sliver lets our slivers blow up artifacts and enchantments when they enter the battlefield. Lava Belly Sliver lets our slivers deal one damage to a player or planeswalker and gain us one life when they enter the battlefield. Leeching Sliver says that whenever a sliver we control attacks, the defending player loses a life. Mana Weft Sliver turns all of our slivers into mana dorks. Mnemonic Sliver lets us pay two and sacrifice the sliver to draw a card. Necrotic Sliver lets our slivers pay three and sacrifice themselves to blow up any permanent. 
Root Sliver can't be countered and makes our other slivers uncounterable as well. Spiteful Sliver was covered earlier and is our primary game ender. Finally, Toxin Sliver has all of our slivers immediately kill any creature that they damage. Our final two slivers are our legendary Sliver Overlord and Sliver Queen. Sliver Overlord can search our library for any sliver by paying 3 mana, or can permanently gain control of any sliver also for 3 mana. Sliver Queen can pay 2 mana to make a 1-1 colorless sliver. They have no abilities, but they can suck up all the other abilities from all of our other slivers. Has Sliver stopped meaning anything for you guys? It has for me. Anyway, moving away from Slivers, let's look at the spells that have to do mass damage to every creature, then work with our Spiteful Sliver and our Commander, also a Sliver. Anger of the Gods, Blasphemous Act, Chain Reaction, Starve Extinction, and Storm's Wrath can all result in game-ending amounts of damage. And because we're a 5-color deck, we also need access to all of our colors as soon as possible. We can accomplish this with artifacts like Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern, and Chromatic Orrery, or ramp spells like Cultivate, Farseek, Kodama's Reach, and Rampant Grow. Cards like Icon of Ancestry, Pyre of Heroes, Raise the Draugr, and Shared Summons also come in very handy since we're hard on that tribal theme. Our last handful of non-land cards are mainly just good stuff to help fill our roles like Protection, Removal, or Swarming. Swift Foot Boots can make our commander nearly impossible to deal with by combining Hexproof and Indestructible, while Death Sprout can act as both a removal and a ramp spell all in one. Hive Stirring adds more bodies to the field to soak up all of our Sliver's effects, Maelstrom Nexus cheats more things into play by giving our first spell each turn Cascade, which pairs very nicely with the Sliver that gives Flash, Rhythm of the Wild can make sure that our creatures are ready to rumble in whenever we need them to, Tortured Existence allows us to basically trade creatures in our hand for ones that we want in our grave. Warstorm Surge turns all of our slivers into more raw damage when they enter the battlefield. And finally, Wild Pair can be used to tutor up slivers from our deck and put them directly into play whenever we have a creature enter the battlefield that was cast from our hand. For the land base in this deck, I run all 11 gates, one for each of the two colored guilds, as well as a gateway plaza. This is because we also run Mazes End as an alternate wind condition, because I'm a sucker for alternate wind conditions. We also run all five Vivid Lands, since we need to make sure that we can always hit our colors. Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Jun Panorama can fetch most of our basics that we have to fix our mana. Exotic Orchard, Unclaimed Territory, and Command Tower almost always tap for all of our colors. The almost coming from Exotic Orchard, which can only tap based on whatever colors our opponents could produce. Muda Vault can also become a Sliver creature itself when it animates. And Sliver Hive can tap for a colorless, tap for any color to cast Sliver spells, or serve as a mana sink to spit out 1-1 colorless Slivers for 5 mana if we already control a Sliver. Round things off with 3 Forests, 2 Islands, 3 Mountains, 2 Plains, and 3 Swamps. And we are ready to go! Thanks for joining me on this very fun Commander Deck Tech. I hope you enjoyed the list that I provided, and I look forward to seeing what spicy tech you all use down in the comment section below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little bell so that you never miss an upload. Later!